What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today I'm going to show you on how to make a lap counter for your races in Unreal Engine. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so right now I have just have the uh, vehicle template imported. So, you know, it's just the normal Unreal Engine 4, uh, well, Unreal Engine 5 uh, vehicle template, so nothing crazy. So what we have to do over here is basically add a trigger on the... You know, somehow in, in a place that we like in the road in order that when our vehicle passes over there we will just increase the uh, basically a variable which will be the current laps that we have and we'll go ahead and quickly just display it in our ui okay so what we have to do is basically go ahead and create a blueprint because later on it will be much handy uh, to have a custom blueprint so we can do more things so let's go ahead and just go into the content browser right click and create a blueprint class this will be an actor it's gonna be bp underscore and lap counter let's go ahead and open this up of course you can name it however you want so what we're gonna place it here when it opens uh, there we go uh, we're gonna go ahead and just um, make some simple, add some simple cubes. So we have a bit of the structure. So literally, I'm just gonna place a cube and put it, let's say, uh, minus 200 here. Well, minus uh, 350. And then basically, I need to stretch this one out. It has to be like this. And then duplicate this one. And this will be in, uh, 350. And then when you duplicate this one and then rotate it like this 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 is completely off task okay this is just to have kind of a guidance to see where is our our meta or you know we have to go and put our lap okay so now that we have a bit of structure what we can do is add the trigger itself so basically a collision that would take the car going so let's go and search for a box collision so this will be basically the trigger and basically it will be in center here so we can change the box extent here so let's make the basically the, the box extent a bit bigger so 310 maybe and then maybe we can make it uh even thinner yes thinner uh, because we don't have to make it very thick and then we're gonna need to make it uh basically higher there you go something like that it can be pretty rough it's just you know a big area so our car when it enters it will detect it great so now we can go ahead and place it in the scene so let's say that our car spawns here it makes sense to have the meta here normally when you start a race in other games you also have the meta i don't know if you say it like that in english but like the destiny and the finish line i guess uh, right in front also from where you start so let's go ahead and drag it here and put it here facing like this so you can go ahead and change the the size from here from the blueprint but i'm gonna cheat a bit and just make it bigger like this okay so directly from here so yes i'm cheating a bit but it's gonna make things a bit uh, quicker and faster for us great so what we can do right now is go into the trigger okay select it and we need to go into the details panel and just go a bit down and you'll see all these different events so what we have to do is go in the on component begin overlap and click the plus icon so basically we're subscribing to this event whenever an actor goes ahead and passes through the trigger so in that case we need to check that this uh, object is the uh, car the player's car so right now the blueprint that i'm using is basically uh let's go here is sports car pawn so let's go and get the other actor and basically cast to the sports car pawn so basically if the cast is successful and that means that it is our player so for now what we're going to do is just go ahead and print hello okay just to see if everything's working we can also go ahead and just delete the other events that we are not using great compile and save and now we can go ahead and test this so right now when i pass through the trigger you will see here that we have hello and hello now you can see that it appeared two times and i will show you why um this is because and there are two objects or at least the same object passing real quick in the same time. So the thing that we can do for this is just go ahead and add this node, which is a do once. And this will just, just make sure that our object will only pass once. The thing is that we need to reset this, okay? Because now the next time that we do the race, basically the whole lap, and go back, it will not detect our, our player. So we have to basically add a small delay over here. So let's say that it will wait, you know, 0.7 seconds 
and then it will go ahead and reset it. So we can double click to add this pin so we can just move them here so it's a bit uh, prettier. And there we go. And this will go ahead and eliminate that issue that we had with the two objects. And now it only appears one time, as you can see, one hello. Great. So what we have to do is basically create a variable that would increment each time. So what we have to do is go into variables and add a new variable, and this will be laps. And this will be basically a type of integer because it will be just uh, whole numbers. So in here, what we have to do instead of printing hello, we have to get our laps, basically get it, and then we can use this node, which is plus plus, and it will just increment it by one each time. It's very useful. And then that's pretty much it. It will go ahead and update the laps. So basically, we'll start with lap zero and lap one and so on. So let's go ahead and just display real quick this uh, UI in uh, our, our widget. This variable, sorry, in the UI, in the widget. So what we can do is right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. This will be a normal user widget and now this can be a WP underscore lab counter, something like that. And let's go ahead and open this widget. Now what we need to do is go to the palette and search for a canvas panel and just drag it into the hierarchy over here. So now we can start placing things on our uh, widget. So what we need to do is get a text and just drag it over here. And then we're gonna go into the anchors and set it to be up. So now it will automatically be snapped there. So basically we want to have our text on somewhere here. So what we can do is change the position Y and X to be zero, zero. And then basically in the alignment, we're gonna just as a 0.5 and 0.5. So now you can see it will exactly be in the center. And the only thing left to do will be to get the position Y and drop it into around here let's say another thing that we have to do is get the font and basically make it uh, a bit bigger so let's say that 50 will be pretty okay yeah i think I'm pretty that's pretty good now we're gonna need to make uh, the box a bit bigger so let's go ahead and put that to be like that and now we can reset the x position and it will be aligned there also the justification we can just align it at the center and now just to see what we can do is just put lab one and this is just us to preview how it will be just a placeholder to see how beautiful it will be how you are now i'm gonna put the position y a bit upper here and there you go we can now compile and save okay so what we have to do right now is go ahead and of course fill this ui and also spawn it so first of all let's go into our vehicle template blueprints and let's go into the sports car let's open our blueprint class in this case i have this one over here Great, so this is just the control of the vehicle, okay? Of course, if you're using your own car, you will go into your own car's blueprint. There's, there will be no change. And basically, what I want to do is go into the begin play. And right, right after the begin play, uh, what I want to do is just go ahead and call this node, which is create widget. And now we can go ahead and find our lab counter, and the owner and player will be the basically uh, play controller. And now we need to get this and just add it into the viewport. And now we can just place that over here. Great. So right now it will go ahead and appear, as you can see, lap one. But of course, when we pass over here, it will not update. So there are two ways of doing this. We can go into the widget and select here and basically bind the text. And there's another way of doing so. We can go into the lab counter and access here the widget and then update the text from here. So really we're gonna do it the second way. I just go ahead and get in the widget and then update in the text. So we don't have to basically bind it over here. Of course, you can also bind it, but it's, I think, simpler to use to be like this. So we, now we can close the widget and let's go into the sports car blueprint. And we have to do before basically adding it to the, uh, to the viewport is right clicking here and promoting it to a variable. So it will be saved as a variable. And now this will be the um, lab counter UI. And now we need to go ahead and set it. And now this widget will be added into the viewport. So basically, when we create it, we now save it in the variable and then we go ahead and just display it in the, in the screen. So now from the lab counter blueprint, we can, because we already cast to the player, we can just get this and say, get um, UI, get lab counter UI. And I go over here right after we increment it. So let's make some space here. And now what we can do is just get the text. So in our case, uh, we have to open quickly the widget because we have, sorry, the, here, the widget. And let's go into the text and put this and rename this. So this will be basically lab text or whatever you want to name it. 
and I'll make sure that is variable is ticked on because if not, we will not be able to access it from our blueprint. So now we can close this and go back to the lab counter and we can get the uh, basically the variable and say get uh, lab text. The one that we have just uh, basically renamed and ticked its variable. And now we can just say set text. And we'll have this second one over here. And now we can just plug it in. Great. And now the in text. Well, what we have to do is basically go ahead and drag this. And there are, uh, there are many ways of doing so. We can directly just pass in the parameter. And as you can see, when I go over here and go through lab one, you can see that it will update to one. But the thing is that we still want to have um, the basically the lap text on, on front of the number. So what we can do instead is use this very handy node, which is format text. So now in the format text, what we can do is put this uh, brackets over here, okay? This squiddly brackets. And now we need to put the input here. So in our case, this will be just um, the, the, the lap number itself, okay? Now when we hit enter, you can see that we have an input. So we will get the lap number, the variable, and put it over here. And now right in front of the input, we'll put lap and then a space. So basically, it will place the text lap and then an input that is the lap number in that case. So now you will see that uh, there will not be any change. But for example, if I change laps to start with one instead of zero, when I pass through here, you can see that it will update to lap two keeping the lap text at the front. So that's basically exactly what we want. Now, let's put this back to zero. Or we have two options. So normally when you start race, I guess that you pass through here, but uh, maybe you want to already see, uh, well, lap one and, you know, not be updated. Um, so there's a thing that we can do over here, and it's basically ignore the first time that it passes through. So a way of doing this is just create a new variable is first time and then go and say boolean and then basically um, just get this and then say branch and then if it's basically the first time uh, passing through here, we will go ahead and uh, don't do anything. Okay, and this will be only on false. So when it's not the first time, but if it's the first time, we'll just get is first time set here and then set it to true. So the next time that will pass, it will update. So you will see that then uh, when I go here, it will not update like the before. And then I can just go here and then stop and go back. I'm cheating. <laughs> and then there we go, lap two. So just a way of the first time going through here that it will not update because we have just started the race of course you have this like behind the player maybe you don't have to do that it's up to you but it's a, a double check so that's it guys if you found it so helpful i would really appreciate you could like the video and subscribe to my channel i have lots of unreal engine fight throws so i'm gonna go ahead and check them out go ahead join my discord server so you can go ahead and ask any questions and show your progress and talk with, with other devs such as me and uh, also follow me on my socials such as twitter and instagram and now yes, with all I said, bye bye.